Welcome to Pause for Effect. I'm Prajwal. And I'm Jacob. And today we got a magic kit. Why? Why did we get a magic kit? So I went on Amazon, found the best rated magic kit for under $30 and thought we could open it up, take a look at what's inside. I think a lot of times when people get into magic and they progress, you start to look past beginner stuff. You look start to look yeah. past simple tricks and simple gimmicks. Sometimes it's good to take a step back and realize that there can still be a lot of good stuff at this level. It's more about your performance and your skill level than the material itself. All right, let's take a look at what we have in the box. It looks like we have uh, 50 plus mind-blowing tricks. We can also uh, master in minutes. I hope we can. Perform like a professional magician, that's good. Oh, I want to do that. I want to perform I, like a professional. I too would like to perform like a professional magician. <laughs> even, even after doing magic for 15 years, I would still like I would to, very much, to perform yeah, like a professional. I would love to perform like professionals. <laughs> Age six plus. I was worried about that. I was thinking this might be too advanced for me. It still might be too advanced that's, that's fair. for you. That's fair. You know, is at least age appropriate. But we can, we can read, or at least I can read. I can look the pictures. Oh, okay. So, All right. That should fine. be good. For 30 bucks, this might be pretty yeah. good. So let's go ahead and open this up. All right. <laughs> the instruction manual, we're not gonna... Hold on to that though, because I don't know how confident I am <laughs> in my own ability <laughs> good point. to we'll, be able to figure out we'll routines right there. some of this stuff. We have playing cards, uh, not a whole deck. This is just uh, five, so five, five board cards and that's it. This little guy. Just some pack of tricks, I guess. I definitely recognize him. I don't know what this is. How could you not know what that is? I don't know if you've ever done this, but I love this. We have another one. This one's a more rectangular box. I think I know what this is. I definitely know what this is. I'm not sure what this is immediately. This looks like a, like one of those old like film canisters. And these little guys, I, I assume there are multiple. This is a kind of like optical illusion. Okay. I believe I know what this is. What is that? Um, I'll demonstrate it for you later. It's okay. uh, not exactly the quality one would want one of these to be. For 30 bucks, can't really complain about that too much. I think we all know what this is. Well, yeah, it's a magic wand. That's it a requirement a magic wand. For, for all magicians. I wonder if this is a loaded dice. So we have five. Not, no. So no, it's, so it's, not loaded. It's not loaded, so that's, that's out. These are pretty obvious, probably even to Anyone who's not a magician, uh, <laughs> like... you're, you're kind of getting a little bit of a giveaway. I like how they made it clear that, that there's like the three and then the one there's like over the odd, here, the odd over one. here by itself. Yep. <laughs> Last but not least, uh, we have this thing, which is we'll perform this. We'll get to this. this that is uh... that is a classic. <laughs> All right. So look, it's it's pretty clear that you're not getting sort of the best quality materials when you buy this magic kit. But at the end of the day, for thirty dollars, you you know you don't really need it. And to be fair, to perform a lot of these, you don't really need a whole lot of quality either. Let's go through these and see if we can do any of them off the cuff or if we need to actually reference the instruction manual. Well, I mean, look, out of the, out of the box though, we have five playing cards. Oh, I didn't even notice the off corner. Look at that, we're learning things. The interesting thing about these that I actually didn't notice right away is that all but one of them are different on the corners. There's spade in this corner and there's club mm. in this corner. The so, routine so. that you might do with these is fan them out to the spectator and you tell them to think of any one of the cards that are in here. Okay, great. Right? You give them a free choice. Mm -hmm. So you've got one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead and focus again on your card. Yep. I'm actually going to take out one of these cards okay. that I think is yours. I'm going to put this away. Okay. okay. To see if I got it right, I'm going to spread these cards back out and I want you to tell me do you see the card that you selected? No. Oh. There are a few of these that are in this category of the first tricks that I ever saw when I went into a magic shop that blew me away and this was actually one of them. One of the two boxes you receive uh, look like it should fit a bridge sized playing card. The way this works, I'm thinking, is when you take a card and you place it inside of this box. You see the cards clearly in this box. Nothing funky about this. I'll close this box. And what's gonna happen now is, I snap my fingers. Can I snap? Yeah, if you want to. Well, thank it's, you. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it, it works. Uh, you'll see that the card actually vanishes from this box. It's actually, it's gone, right? It's completely and totally gone. If you snap, snap one more time. Uh, so hopefully, yeah. And the card uh, does in fact return when you snap one more time. So this is, this is a, 
This is a change box <laughs> that, um, it's not, again, not particularly well constructed, but it's, it's pretty nifty. It's not really something that can be examined uh, by a spectator. You finish the trick and, oh, can I see that? <laughs> nope, nope, I don't want you to look at that. Like, that's going away in my pocket. You could do this as a vanish. You could do it as like a torn and restored. I think that a lot of people get hung up on the idea of like everything needs to be examinable. Like I agree that like having examinable sort of props that you're using makes an effect stronger, but there's no reason why you can't work in things that are, you know, clearly unexaminable into your routine as long as you sprinkle some examination right. in there with some some other type of effect. Do you want to justify that box over there? What's, oh uh, yeah, okay. So let me let me show you this. This is uh, also falls into the category of one of the first things I ever saw in a magic shop. So this is simply a box with a die inside. And you can see that on each side of this die, there's a different animal. I'm gonna turn my back. I yep. want you to take the die, pick an animal, put that animal face up inside the box, and I want you to close it up so I can't see what's in it, but so you lock in your selection. I'll choose uh, this animal right here. I will place it in face up. I'll cover. So you chose your animal, you yep. put it in the box. There's no way I can yeah, see yeah, through this box. But I'm still gonna put the box behind my back while I try to determine what animal you selected. I appreciate the fact that you're not overproving the fact that you can't see in the box by also putting it behind your back. I would that never really do helps. that. 100%, That's, this is excellent, <laughs> excellent lesson. Okay, all right. Yeah. I'm gonna say yeah. that you chose the turtle. That's am that's amazing. I did choose. That it? I chose Terry the turtle. You can see. That was, yeah. Wow. That's a mentalism right there. It sure is. You Take can, that, Peter you, Turner. You can do this. Uh, <laughs> I love this trick because it's incredibly simple. The apparatus is simple. There's no there's no gimmick to it. It's really easy to do. It's examinable. It's, it's one of totally the first examinable. Thing we've seen here that's totally examinable. This is honestly a thing that I would carry around with me. This is one of the things that I anytime I see it or remember it, I think, why don't I do that? Maybe not the quality of this one specifically, but I think in general, it's a it's a fantastic trick. Speaking of fantastic tricks, one of the most versatile things in this set that they've given us to, to play with, I think, is the severed thumb. This thing is absolutely enormous. <laughs> like, this is one of those things that a lot of people know about. They know about the idea of a fake thumb called a, a thumb tip. So the, the basic or most classic like version of the thumb tip would be using a silk, sure. taking that silk or whatever this is, that going into the fist, just like that. And then before you know it, it's gone completely. Watch if we snap over here, it's actually already back in the hand. Right back, just like that. And we can do this one more time. Watch. The silk goes into the hand, just like this. And again, with a snap, it vanishes completely. But down in my pocket, it's right back there. Absolutely one of the most versatile things you can be doing in magic is vanishing with a uh, with a thumb tip. This version of it, using a silk of some kind, is the most classic and probably now the most cliche and least impressive. Three out of 10 people will immediately know yeah. how it works, right? The idea of a fake thumb or a thumb tip is something that's, that's pretty well, I think, made its way into popular culture. But there are so many other things that people aren't aware of that you can use this for. You know, you can use it with things that are liquid. You can use it with things that are burning, like to vanish a cigarette. You can um, there's store something in there. You can transform objects with thumb tips as well. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with a thumb tip. It is one of the most underrated yeah. gimmicks, I think. It's definitely something you should consider including in your magic everyday carry if, <laughs> You know, you're like us and, and you have, one have a magic everyday carry. Now, this specific thumb tip, talking about the, the quality of it, the, the biggest challenge with that I think it's, you it's, found it's the is size. the size. Now, even with uh, Proshwell's spider fingers, <laughs> this thing is enormous. I, this is an absolutely massive thumb tip. Like, I have to bend my thumb to keep it on and to not immediately fall it off. In addition to learning the actual effects, you now have to think about, hold on, I can't let this fall out off my thumb when I'm, uh, when I'm trying to vanish something. So not the best quality. You can go online to for, from a magic dealer and grab a higher quality thumb tip. Now the other thing that people complain about is the the color. This one is kind of an average of our skin tones, yep, actually. For me, it's a little bit 
dark, and it's just, it's too light. It's way too light, yeah. For years, we're still at a point where pretty much all thumb tips that we're aware of that are produced are white or white adjacent. You know, that's something that will hopefully change uh, over time as interest in magic only grows and gets more and more diverse, it would be great to see kind of a range of, of thumb tip skin tones, but that is not an excuse not to use a thumb tip. You'll hear people talk about performing or practicing with versions of a thumb tip that are right. brightly colored, that don't match at all, or versions that aren't even an actual thumb tip, are like a thimble. Use of the thumb tip is all about placement and all about angles, and you should in theory be able to paint this thumb tip red, it's not about does it match exactly. It's, it will never match exactly. If you hold, <laughs> hold it up like this to display, that's something that you will never ever do. They're always gonna be able to tell that something is off, they're gonna see that it's there. So it's all about concealing it and using those angles and using your hand position and movement to your advantage. For me, like all thumb tips that I own right now are, are clearly like they're not, they're not brown thumb tips. But it really does help when it comes to practicing angle management and practicing misdirection. If they look at your hand, they look at your thumb, you're, you're doing something wrong if you've drawn attention to it. And so it really does help to practice that when it comes to audience management. You should absolutely grab a thumb tip and practice with it, if for no other reason than to get better at angle managing for any of the other effects that you might do. Moving on to something that's a little bit less, I would say less known, uh, is this thing. And I promise this is G-rated. I'm gonna chop my finger off with this. Let's angle this for his camera, watch. Just like that, but you can see that it's still whole. You're gonna, you're gonna laugh at me. I think this is, a, it's a cool effect. It's not the best execution of this effect yeah. because of the, the quality of this prop. Like, that, it's, not, it's not supposed to do that. <laughs> um, uh, and so you, you end up having a pretty low quality product. I think this is the, the effect that suffers the most out of these from, from the quality of construction. This, this one, you will leave at home. The Nine others. out of 10 times, easily. Yeah. Now, this thing has a similar <laughs> similar true. form factor. Similar form factor. This is another one that there are so many versions of this. This is a fun little gimmick, a fun little trick. This spot is intended to hold the coin, so I need to get a coin. So, there, we've got a coin. You can see that this has this little indent right here. You can also see that there's nothing inside. Yeah, you can't- That, uh, that slide, there's no duplicate let's, coin. Let's, let's there's no... make sure everyone else can see it too, right? There's nothing in here. This is, this is completely empty. So the idea here, is that the coin is gonna go right in that spot so we can't get to it, and it's gonna get hidden away just like this. So go ahead and snap your fingers for me. Now watch if we turn this around just like this, do that rotation, you can see the coin is now completely gone. It's not ditched inside, it's, it's actually gone. Now we can do the exact same thing, but we can bring it back just like this. Turn it again, go ahead and snap your fingers. And, and it's it back. comes right back. This was definitely something when I was when I was really young and went to a magic shop for the first time. Absolute, I was fooled. I mean, I was like seven, but you know. This is purely mechanical. There's no slight, there's no skill, there's no, this thing does all the work for you. I feel like this is a super common thing for like you're the uncle who does magic tricks and you know, this is a thing that, there are different ways that you could do this. So you could have a, a second coin and rather than vanishing it and bringing it back, you could just put it in here, get rid of it, show it's gone and that it's traveled to your pocket. Pretty simple, it's pretty self-explanatory once you get it, once you see how it works. A lot of people know how this works, Yeah. but but it's still, a lot of people still don't, and it's still fun, and it's still cool, and it's a nice little, like, classic, you know, magic gimmick. Let's come back to the uh, the dice that we, we learned is not loaded. Um, so the idea behind this effect is, is basically the following thing. I'm gonna have you choose a number on this dice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you can choose one because you like it. You can roll it and then choose a random one. It doesn't matter how you decide on the okay. number, but All I want right. you to pick the number. I want you to put it in so that your number is face down. Mm, okay. Okay. And when you do that, sorry, uh, close, obviously close it and close it in there, right? right. So your number face down, let okay. me know when you're done. We're Just gonna like go watching. with that. That's a good number. Okay, and the lid is on the canister. It's yep. face down and Great. it is in there. You take the dice, chosen a number, you put it in so that the number would be facing this way, correct? That's right. why I my face down. Okay, there's no way I can see what that is. This is literally, right. um, I'm gonna place it in. I'm gonna cover that larger canister up as well. 
We put it in two canisters here. There's basically no way I can know what number you chose. So I'm gonna try to divine the identity of your number using uh, my advanced mentalism skills. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and guess, uh, and by guess I mean no, because I'm a mentalist, that the number that you chose out of the, out of the six numbers you got is five. Wow. Is that correct? That is correct. That is... Take that, Luke Germain. Yeah, that's right. It's and now I assume that the die has vanished from inside the canister. Uh, that is that is true. Uh, if I had done it that way, I <laughs> would <laughs> This is this is pretty simple. Can you tell me which one of these is bigger? I'll play along. It's <laughs> this one. It's the orange one. Yeah, hundred percent. Now watch. If I take these and I mix them back up, mixing up two objects. Oh my goodness! The green back? one is larger. Now, now the green one's larger. That's incredible. These are the same size. Yeah. <laughs> If you couldn't so. tell. This is just an optical illusion because of the geometry of these. It looks like the one that's on bottom is larger. You can also do this with these sleeves from wherever we got these an unnamed these company sleeves, that these sleeves from this, this morning. You don't even need the stuff out of the kit. You don't even need to buy it separately. So way to sell a thirty dollar kit. You know what? What do you want from me? The, what about the wand? Okay, so What's up with this? is this an ordinary wand without nothing special about it, or can you do something with this wand? It is a magic wand, so you oh, do all the magic with it. That's right. We needed it to perform Genius. all these other effects. That was a requirement. I don't know how we managed to do any of the stuff we've done thus without far using the wand. without using the magic wand. The only thing I can really think to do immediately with this wand would be to take it and just like that. And then hand it to your to your spectator. Yeah, obviously, that's, that's obviously for, sanitary for inspection. You could start with a wand that you pull out of your pocket as your travel size wand. That then you expand just like that for full performance. So yeah. We've got a couple of classics left, and then something we don't know anything about. So this thing is one of the most classic things in magic. Basically, a vase, um, and inside we have a ball. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a red ball. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this ball out of the base. This is super straightforward. All right, we'll put that back on, and uh, we'll actually put this in my pocket, I think. We'll uh, put it in my pocket. It's very open, it's very fair, mm -hmm. it's very clean. Yeah. All right? right now, if I snap my fingers, it actually vanishes from my can pocket. I do it? Yeah, absolutely. No, I'm, there's nothing. It's right back in. Now that it's in the base, can you take it and send it back to your pocket? Absolutely. Oh yeah, go ahead and uh, if you want to show snap your it to me, magic boy. Yeah, no, go, you have to go to oh, snap okay. your fingers. Oh, yeah, 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 no, it's magic. Yeah. magic is all in your, magic is in your hands. So you oh can see it's actually goodness. gone. Uh, and and it is in fact uh, in my pocket again. There is a video online of Penn and Teller performing this. They do an amazing job, and it, it's it's proof positive that you could be a professional, like clearly a famous magician and still sort of perform this at a very high level of sort of competency and skill. It is, it's a classic. It is, no, honestly, it is, it's one of the best tricks in this kit, I think, and definitely uh, one of the, the most performed ones. We've been kind of sleep sleeping on some of the stuff that's more classic and saving it for the end, at least of the stuff that we, you know, know that we've, we've pulled out of the kit. So the other thing that falls into this category is these little guys. And this is the classic uh, cups and balls. It's probably the oldest trick in magic, like far and away. The simplest form or idea of the cups and balls is we have a, a ball for each cup and we're gonna take each one, we're gonna put it in the hand, the first one just like this, and it's gone. So now we have the others. We're gonna take that second one, just like this. And of course, Prajwal, as the spectator, yeah. I'm gonna take this third one, and can you go ahead and snap your fingers for me? Just like that. That third one goes, and you Watch can now you see that all three are back underneath their respective cups. This has gone very far. I know uh, Penn and Teller do, I think, a clear version. Jason Latimer does an amazing clear version. Again, like with the rest of the stuff in here, uh, this isn't necessarily the highest quality version. I don't begrudge the fact that they use plastic, but I kind of wish that these were all the same color because then you could do the the fun little like, yeah, kind like of loses something. Illusion, but it, it obviously loses something given the fact that these are all different colors. I would definitely use something that's a little bit more substantial than these because these are really hard to, to deal with. 
But this is a great starting point. Like what we just did there, that we're just, we're just messing around. There are incredible routines that you can do. And it doesn't require anything to actually be gimmicked, right? Like this is all totally examinable. Exactly. Yeah. This is a great place to start if you're gonna learn sleight of hand. And, and honestly, even if you don't wanna do the cups and balls, this is still an amazing place to start as far as practicing your sleight of oh, hand yeah. and practicing like building your own routines that maybe no one has ever done before coming up with your own stuff. We have one thing left I think that we haven't walked through yet and it's uh, this guy, right? that. Okay, I, I, I don't know what these are. These are little uh, doves. It's a spongy material. So the idea here would be to do a sponge ball routine basically with these doves. It's also kind of unwieldy. You have to like fold in the wings. Well, a dove has to <laughs> fold the wings in to stop flying. So it makes, it, it's like realism. I'm gonna take one of these doves and I'm gonna put it in my hand. I'm gonna take the other one, go ahead and open up your hand for me. Go ahead and close your hand nice and tight around okay. that other one, just like this. Now watch, all I have to do is tap like that and my dove jumps to join oh. yours. Oh my goodness, that's incredible. <laughs> Do you think this is what they meant when, when people are good at like dove magic? See, if you did if you did this to a real dove, that would be a problem. Like you could do more involved routines. I imagine the intent is to put these two doves together in the hand and then you produce the whole family. I am not a huge fan of the form factor because normally when you have when you do magic with sponges, they're actual sponge balls and they're brightly colored, they're easy to see, they're easier to manipulate. Uh, I would much prefer to have a set of even small like sponge balls. I don't think anyone's a fan of this particular form factor. Well, I think the execution <laughs> this probably could have could have been better. That's that's all the stuff you've got in the, in the thirty dollar magic kit. What are you what are your what are your thoughts on this? I don't think anything that we looked at today is is super high quality, but I think the amount of material that you can get out of these or props like these is pr still pretty impressive. I think it's a good exercise to go back through and to be reminded of what you used to think was really good and what of it holds up versus what of it doesn't hold up. The ball and vase and the cups and balls and the thumb tip, the, those punch above their weight. Uh, there are a couple things in here that it, this makes me want to practice more. So I don't know, what did you think? There's a lot of stuff that works, uh, like we mentioned. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't quite work, but I think part of the journey that you take in magic is figuring out what works for you best and what doesn't work for you best, and there's enough of a variety here that it that it that I think it's good. I don't really know if I'd recommend spending your $30 on this versus like a book, but at the same time, despite sort of the, the tough time we may have given them for, for quality, it, it does re-inspire me to re revisit a lot of these types of effects. There are also a lot of uh tricks that you see come out now that either use these props or use some of these same principles. It's always good to go back and see the simple stuff and remember where things came from and have kind of a knowledge bank of it so that you know if you see something else that looks familiar that that's where it came from. Remembering and familiarizing yourself with some of these old, even cheesy tricks that you might get out of a kid's magic kit is still, it's a good exercise. Hope you enjoyed going through this stuff with us. Hope you uh, either learned something or at least were inspired by some of the older effects in here. Uh, we'll link uh, down below a description for uh, some of the higher quality uh, props that we went through. We'll link this kit as well below in case you do want to buy it. Uh, and for some of the performances we mentioned regarding some of these props, we'll link a couple of those that we find particularly good as well. Um, again, hope you had a great time. And as always, thanks for sticking around.